But for these scriptures, these three scriptures, uh, he wants me to talk about them and study them, right? Uh, because you cannot study, right, uh, to show yourself approved, right, uh, unless you are studying to show yourself approved unto God. I don't feed my pastor nothing unless I know God worked with me on it or God approved me to tell him, right? Because uh, I, I tell my pastor everything and I tell him things, uh, right, that I know he don't want to hear. I, I know he don't want to hear. I, I, I tell him stuff like that, right? But it's God approved because I'm coming to him to let him know this is what I'm going through. And I'm not telling nobody else. I'm not telling Ms. Linda. I ain't telling Kirk. I ain't telling nobody else. I tell Pastor David things I don't tell anybody else. Why? That's between me and him. <laughs> That's that figure. Figure it out. <laughs> I don't feed nothing unless it comes straight from God. Or it comes from me after I've consulted with God. I don't feed him nothing. Which means, and I talk to him, I send him stuff every day. Which means, if I'm sending stuff every day, and I'll send him nothing unless it comes from God. Or it comes from me talking to God. Or it comes from me conversating relationally with God. Then God and I have discussed it. Right? And I'm bringing it right to him so that he can see it. Right? Because I want him to understand me. I don't want to understand the way I think. I want to understand the word of God that I see in for myself and the way I see it. So that, so that, not because I'm running from him doing this. I want him. I do it so that. I do it so that. I do it so that he can correct it. I do it so that he can come back at me and say, Jamie, no. That's not what this says. Reread uh, these 15 chapters again. And I reread them in three days. <laughs> I love doing it. Cause I was, I was so excited. That's why we read in three days. It was okay. It became the highlight of my life. No, it was a week, about a week. It became the highlight of my life. I was so excited. Why? Cause it was a homework that I gave myself. It was homework that I got from somebody that cares about me. How do I know I care, he cares about me? Because he gave me homework. Somebody, nobody can give you homework unless they care about you. Because they have to consider what you need and think about it, right? And give it to you with you in mind. It's specific to you, right? When he said, do this, he wasn't thinking about, do this, David Lewis. He wasn't thinking about this, do this, Harmony Wilson. He wasn't thinking about, do this, Jessica Thomas, right? He wasn't thinking about, do this, um, Buford, Buford McGee. I gotta have a kid so I can name him Buford McGee. I told him you to name a baby Buford, but she won't. <laughs> Jess just looked at her. Just, just looked at me and then looked at her and said, please don't name your baby Buford. <laughs> it's not Buford, it's Buford. B-O-O-F-O-R-D. Buford. I had a great name for a boy. Buford. <laughs> Do me a favor. Stop feeding your past this garbage that you won't eat. God, God convicted me about that. At one point, I was going to him and said, tell me everything. So I was going to him and tell him stuff. And just, but I was dumping on him. I was dumping into him. And God said, uh-uh. The toilet's over there. Why are you giving him that? And you got to go, I'm going to take that to the toilet. And I'm going to say, some of y'all got a toilet in the street. And y'all need to learn how to put, where, blah, blah, put first things first. Put it where it belongs. And use your flusher. Flush it down. Stop feeding David Lewis your, your poop. Just because you are upset about what's going on in your life. Uh, clean your own poop. Stop bringing your pastors to your house. All right? Bye-bye. Uh, mama, with your words. Tell them what's going on inside your house. Uh, right? And then shoving their nose in the poop that's on the floor. No. You made the mess. You clean it up. Right? They they are not dogs. Stop making them lick it up. They are not dogs. Dogs are back in the day, back in uh, the, the Israelite state, were known as, uh, they were known for, um, they, they were Gentile. They represented Gentile people. That's what Mephibosheth called him himself, a, a, a Lodabar, a dead dog. I think he was hiding amongst the Gentiles. Because they were called dogs. They were considered to be dogs. And I want to say that we've gotten over it, but we think that we are the children of Israel and we still treat our pastors like they are. Ooh, what in the world can I say now? Not, not, not blessed of the Spirit. They are not poop. I don't like saying that on here. They are not poop. They are prize. They are prize. I don't want to say prize possessions, but they are not your possessions. I talk about my pastors. I keep my pastors like little trinkets in my heart. They are mine. They belong to me. You mess with them, you mess with me. And you don't want to mess with me. You mess with that one right there, that one looks like a dad. You mess with that one right there, it's a problem. It's a, it's a huge, it's a big, monstrous, grand, deal problem. It's a problem. I have a, I have a, I have a problem with that. 
Take care of your pastors. Don't let people come in and just say what they want in, uh, in their church. Realize anything that comes in the church that is not corrected. That's what Paul said on top of those people. And he corrected them anytime they said anything in error. Because if you let it be said in error, do you know? Don't say it if you are not sure of it. Because you know the power that your words have when you say, God said, speak to the mountain. I know my words have power. Because if he says, speak to the mountain, and the mountain will remove itself. And I don't have to touch the mountain. The mountain removes itself and casts itself to the sea. It commits suicide. Suicidal mountains are just because I said it. Now, if that's the case, my words cause that. Don't let nobody come in just saying anything around the church and around your pastors. They create a, a smoke of a serpent that will travel around. I'm not cutting my don't be in air about, uh, around, about scripture around me. Don't do it. And if I correct you, accept it. Just like if, I, if my pastors correct me, I accept it. I get in their face and I'm like, okay, tell me more. And tell me more scriptures. Tell me some more. I want to learn. So when they correct me, it's like, it's, it's almost like a, a trap for them. <laughs> they can't leave. <laughs> Funsies. I say that thing about Pastor Tim and Pastor Trent. Because they say stuff to me, and literally Pastor Trent will say stuff and be backing away while he's saying it. <laughs> and the last, the last conversation I had with him, he said, Jamie, that is a good point. You know what you need to read? Heaven by Randy Alcorn. <laughs> if you guys don't know, that is a resource of all resources. The book is as big as my apartment. <laughs> and I asked him a question, he told me I need to read that book. <laughs> Pastor Tim Harvey, he just run. <laughs> he they just run. Oh, Charlotte, you calling me. Charlotte is right here and she's not even crying. Charlotte, call me. I hear Charlotte. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> love correction. Learn to love correction. Make it fun. For me, I just did it because I'm like, for me, it's like a video, it's not a video game, it's a game show. Can you name all the books of the Bible for $100? I sure can. I always misplace Colossians. Comes after uh, 2 Thessalonians, I think. Since I was little, I always misplace Colossians. As a matter of fact, they had a, a contest, and that's when I got my first picture Bible. And all the kids in my church, they have a contest. Name the books of the Bible by next week. And I named all of them, except Colossians. Do you really need Colossians? Like, I mean, seriously. Just, mm. I mean, not we need the information of the book, but it gets in the way of my memorizing the um, books. Instead of me knowing all 66 books, I know all 65. Do you know all, all the books of the Bible? I guarantee you don't. I'll tell you this much you are so special and so loved and so great and so powerful that God reserved. A place in a book for you. I believe it's between Jude and Revelations. Because Revelation has not happened yet. It is, I keep saying Revelations, and it's not Revelations, it's the Revelation of John. So it's Revelation. But since Revelation has not happened yet, the, the Bible is not past tense. That's why knowing the tense of the Bible itself, and when Bibles leave out tenses, they leave out certain things, that's a problem. Because it's very important to know and watch the tense in the scripture. That's why we spent two days on it. Know to watch the tense of the was and the is and they were and they um. They, they, you know they are for a reason. Watch the tense. The tense is very important because your slot is open and it's open between Jude and Revelation. It's the first epistle, the second epistle of Jamie because she's beautiful. Hey, it's my epistle. I can name whatever I want. My epistle got a lot of cool people in it. Talks about my birthday. Talks about my poetry. Talks about my art. It's based around that. My epistle is based around my praise. But if the Bible, right? If the Bible tells us that we are the 67th epistle of the Word of God, the Bible itself, right, is the inspired and infallible Word of God. Then, and you know that nothing that you do for Christ, or nothing that you don't do for Christ, will will not last. Like anything you do for Christ is what will last. If you don't do anything, if you don't do it for Christ, it will not last. That's why I help the Buddha people. I'm helping. If that's the case, then everything I do right now that I involve God in will be in my pistol. It's funny because God just told me, be beware when your pistol turns into your so it turns into an epistle. Meaning your, your your word, the way you describe God, right, will be in your epistle, right? The way you talk about God, 
And your and, and, and what you say to people, they don't they don't they don't they don't hear that. They read your life. Anybody that is, has any common sense to know anything about you will read your life. And in them reading your life, they ought to see your epistle. However, when you look at my epistle, if you are getting beat up by it, ooh, 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 and shot by it, uh, what happens when my epistle, for the love of God, becomes an epistle? That's why I need to talk to my pastor. Am I scared? Yes. <laughs> Do I want to? No. <laughs> Do I need to? Absolutely. Am I going to run from them? Probably. Do I still need to talk to them? Yes. <laughs> do we always want to do, do I want to do what we have to do? No. I never want to hear that what I'm doing, right? Because he even said on his uh, video, he said, these are the words I'm proud of you. You're coming up in the in body. He's talking about what Paul said to the people. You're coming up in the body. I'm proud of you here. You're doing exactly what you want to do. And then these are the ways that you are not there yet. That's exactly the way he said it. And that's exactly how he said it. I don't, that's, that's, that's the figure. He's the figure. He's my figure. I don't want to hear him say, I'm not there yet. I am going to cry like a baby. Like a uh, baby. Get me a pacifier right now. I need one. Does he still need to say it? Yes. Because what happens if he doesn't say it? I want to be discipled, but I don't want to get yelled at. God, I can't take it. If he yells at me, that's, I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> but but if I I can't be a disciple if I can't be disciplined I can't be a disciple if Miss Andrea can't discipline me they're one whether you realize it or not so just like he tells me and I expect him to tell me I expect her to tell me too I expect that whenever she comes to me with something Jamie I think yes <laughs> Bring it to me right now. I need it past that ball. Yes. I think you should wear new shoes. I don't care. So you want me to read the whole Bible again? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I want it bad. I want it bad. I want it so bad from them. Also, I kind of want it by osmosis. Yeah, I kind of don't want to hear it. But I want to hear him say it. I don't, I don't, need, I don't need to hear him say it. No, I want, come on. I don't want David Lewis to yell at me. Pastor Tim, the well, he, he always yelling at me anyway. So, <laughs> Pastor Tim's a big teddy bear. Come on, I don't want them yelling at me. I want them upset at me. You never want to disappoint the people you care about the most. It's the first dad figure I've ever had. I don't, I don't want him disappointed. So I stay on top of my word. And I pray like crazy. And I'm sleepy right now and I got allergies crazy. So my eyes are burning. Even though I'm using eye drops, they're burning. Imagine somebody with big eyes like mine and having but the eyes are red. That's just scary. Children children won't like that. Children won't like that. We will grow we're supposed to grow together. But not a situation, right? We were two people before and now we're one person and and and, and, and some bones. Each of us in our individual time, right, to, with conviction from the Holy Spirit and the pastors, right, we get to walk around the bones and inspect them and see what really happened. We still have to work through these bones because no matter what happened, there was somebody here, right, and there were bones left here and the bones were not dealt with. These bones are still here. So we have to work through them and say, okay, what was my part in it? Did I communicate properly? Y'all know I have a problem with communication. Just because I say something does not mean everybody receives it receives exactly what I'm saying. So what happened? We have to look back on it, right? And then me, we have to have God with us. And anytime the enemy tries to whisper something in our ears, we immediately need to pivot, right? Pivot, right? Keep pivoting to God. See Jesus. See Jesus. That's what I hear when I say pivot. Means see Jesus, not see. Selah.
God spoke to me yesterday about that whole seek God situation. Why that was so nerve-wracking for me? I said, I can't get that out. Why is that so nerve-wracking, God? He said, because when you tell somebody to see God, you put them on a level where you are at. And so they could see God just like you do. So you would tell them. That's what she would do with people. She would sit down, talk to them, read the Bible with them, right? But she would uh, seek God. Get out of here. Seek God. When you tell us, when you just like see God, they can see God with you because you talk about your situation, you talk about your life. This is what God did for me. They see God through you, through your testimony. If you tell me to seek God, right? When I seek God. When you tell me to seek a God and just shoo me away, what you do is you try to put me on a level of desperation. Hmm. I could be at the point of patience, invitation, and criticism and not be desperate. But what you do is you take me from the level of wanting God, right, to, to, the, to uh, uh, being at a deficit because I don't have him. You are right there. And I did not understand. I was like, but she is right here. Why won't she help me? But uh, you know, that's why I was supposed to be here, right? She told me when I came, I was part of a ministry, right? So, so I, I made myself the patient. I gave myself the invitation, right? Even though I was invited in for other people. But the criticism was, seek God. And when you, remember, when you tell somebody to seek something instead of see it. Miss Linda is a great therapist because Miss Linda said, okay, Hebrews 13, 5, 6. What does it say? And I told her. Everybody knows that scripture. She said, okay, if he's there, find him. And at that moment, the one thing that that woman would not help me with, and I was trying to do, trying so hard to do for about 15 years, uh, the one thing I was trying, I mean, every day, as, as, as diligent as I am about the Word of God than I, I was now, I, I am now, uh, right? Uh, I was on it. Uh, I was after God. For 15 years, I tried so hard. I think she got so much pleasure out of making God uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, a puzzle that I just could not solve. And when I thought I had to solve, no, nope, go do your first works over. You need to tarry. Pray longer. Fifteen years I looked for God. And Miss Linda said, see him. And I found him. God is not Walder. Right? That's the name Walder. You look at the, you look at that little page thing, and those people are there. God is not Waldo. Waldo. Yeah. You look at that page thing, you look for um, Waldo. He's not he's not playing hide and seek with you and hiding in impossible spots. We don't have to seek anything. When you asking God for things that you have your list, you bring your Christmas list of what you want to God, then he sends you to Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that is a lifelong thing. Because you are bringing your list to him, you are seeking what's on your list. And he's saying, no, seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? It's the body of Christ. Why? Because the kingdom of God is his son, right? And if it's the body of Christ, and Christ is the head, if you're seeking Jesus Christ, all these things will be added unto you. And they are. I'm telling you, I gave God a list to, to match, uh, to, over just over the top list for Christmas two years ago and I got every single thing natural thing on the list I was just giving I was just saying it was a month before and I didn't know how it was going to happen I was just I was spending Christmas with our family and I gave them this huge list and every single thing I knew I knew the funny thing was when I said I want to eat popcorn and, 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 um, and, and, and have cocoa and watch movies with somebody that I love when I said that God is clever because when I said that I was thinking somebody it has to be somebody that I fall in love with and that can't happen in a month it was December 1st and Christmas was December 25th. That can't happen in a month. God is very clever. I did. I ate popcorn and I had cocoa with somebody that I love. With a whole bunch of people that I love. But it wasn't, I didn't get the love of my life. God is very, he's, he's very clever. But even that, I didn't have to seek him. I just talked to him. When you say seek God and just keep showing me, him, seek God, seek God, we can make a puzzle out of God. And when we make puzzles out of God, people that are new and coming into the household of faith, we, don't, we frustrate them. Have you ever read Ephesians chapter 6? What is it about a, a father is provoked not your children to wrath? And I didn't get, I got angry, but then right after I got angry, I felt bad. It was a, it was a nasty, disgusting uh, uh, web of lies. Because when I got angry, I felt bad for being angry because I said I can't get angry because it involves God. So I have to just seek harder. Seek harder. I didn't even know how to seek. Because if you say seek to me, I think hide and go seek. 
You hide, I'll seek. But if the king of the world is hiding, will I ever find him? I had a car, I had a car but... When people come to churches, we put him in places where he cannot be found. And we enjoy it. We do it because of the fact that it makes us feel better. It sits us up higher on our, on our platform, in our head. And when people fall apart and they do not make it, we just lie on them. It's not the first time I've been lying on the church. I mean, she lied on me to the whole church and the pastors. Or the pastor and his wife. There's only one pastor. So it's not the first time I've been lying on the church. I'm all right. My focus is different. Because while you're looking at me, if a ways to come into my house and ways to get at me, I'm looking up the windows of heaven are open. That's how I see God. And the fire is falling tonight. Right? I've got joy, joy down in my soul. Since Jesus made everything right. I traded my old filthy garments. And he gave me a robe of pure white. Now I'm feasting the man up from heaven. And that is why I'm happy tonight. Do you know what that song's about? It's a beautiful song. The song speaks to being a man, a, a martyr. I traded my old filthy garment, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. He gave me a robe of pure white, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. Now I'm feasting a man, not from heaven. And that is why I'm happy tonight. I'm happy being a martyr for God. Because I see him. I know where he at. Don't hide God from me. And then tell me, uh, you're not seeking hard enough, you're not praying hard enough. Because then what you're doing is, you're, you're making me seek your God. No, you haven't found God yet. You need to tell more. Which means, this is the God that you know. This is the God that you want me to seek. And that's the only God, right? No. It's difficult then, because when I struggle in situations like that, that was satanic. But when I struggle in situations like that, that's one thing. But struggling here, right? When God, the whole Spirit of the Lord, takes you and places you down in the middle of dry bones. Now that I, God, you place you down in the middle of a situation. You place you down in the middle of eviction. You place me down in the middle of a health crisis. You place me down in the middle of cancer. You place me down in the middle of sadness. You place me down in the middle of a situation. God, they're lying on me. Even in the church, you place me down in the middle of it. I'm in the middle. I can't find my way out of it. Instead of taking you straight out, what does he do? He takes you round about. Which means he doesn't mean for you to leave. He takes you round and round and round and round and round and round the situation. I'm going to take you round the situation. It's frustrating. I'm going to take you round the situation. And you got to go through what's about over and over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps falling in love with me over and over and over and over again. Right? That's how God expresses love for you. Even when you're, when you're in trouble or when it's a serious situation, you're going around, going around, going around. And sometimes you learn how to pray better. You learn how to pray harder, not longer. Harder, not faster. And when I say harder, I mean it's, like, it's not it's more effort. When I say harder, I mean you are connecting and pushing into, right, and, and, and birthing yourself into the spirit of the Lord so that when he tells you what to pray, you are praying it, right? You two become one. Now, before I can get, um, become one with somebody, even as well, I have to become one with the Holy Spirit, so, right? So, because I have to know, right, who is right for me. I can't connect myself with somebody, right, that the Holy Spirit has not ordained, right? So, so before I even, before I even get married, People, I'm telling y'all, you should have done it. That's why you're unhappy. Before I get married, I have to uh, make sure that I see Holy Spirit about it, right? Your teacher will never tell you, um, okay, you messed up on the test. Seek me after class. Seek me, right? They don't tell you to seek me. They tell you to see me after class. Think about it. And he said, 
to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, thou knowest. The scripture before this, says, it, it, it introduces something that was not in the uh, last uh, uh, tense that we read, right? It introduces a new word, uh, lo. But now that we know we have the lo, and we know what the lo means, we know how to have the behold, we know what the behold means, we know what the tenses are, right? So I'm talking about something that was there but is not there. So, four, so verse 4 going in, that's when you really encounter the present day situation, the present day uh, um, Ezekiel. But the present day Ezekiel is the past. Because remember what was, what, what was, was and is, but is not, right, anymore. What was there before, was and is there, but is not there right now. Get it? So verse 4, he starts to tell us uh, from his tent and his perspective, uh, right, uh, how we should see this thing. Okay, yeah, there were bones. There were bones. But now, uh, the important thing, this is why he doesn't want you probably working on the bones. Because the important thing is, uh, when he says, son of man, can these bones live? He said, oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones uh, and say unto them, oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now! He didn't say, now I'm saying now. From verse 3 to verse 4, right? We get the layout of the background of what's happening. Verse 4, he says, Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, excuse me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Very important scripture. One word that changes everything. Again. Why do I say that word changes everything? Because it says, and again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them. The, from my perspective, we've read the scripture, right? Uh, verse 1 through 3, let's go through it again. Uh, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he answered, he, again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And why say again when there was never a first? Okay, Jenny, you crazy. So what you're saying is, verse 1 through 3, is, it actually takes place after the events of the dry bone uh, valley situation. Yes. So it's actually, so our experience, our present experience, as if we were there when it happened with him, the, verse, the chapter actually should have started with verse 4. But, if that's the case, the chapter would have started like this. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Or where does the again come in? And now that you know Ezekiel, right, that you are putting again, he did it on purpose because he put it at the beginning of the sentence. We say again, right, it's a connector. With, that's our cue or our clue that say, okay, this happened before. Except that, that particular thing, he say, again, the Spirit of the Lord said unto me, prophesy, that never happened. So why is he saying again? Say la. I got an answer. <laughs> I don't want to use this as an example, but I have to. Okay. So um, I was talking to my pastor, I think. Two Sundays ago, and I told him, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, this, this. I was like, you kick me in my shins if I don't get it done. I said, okay. <laughs> he, well, who would take me up on that? Pastor Tim uh, kind of shied back. Pastor Dave, Pastor Dave was like, okay. I'm, I'm Tim, like, he's like, okay, what, 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 I'll do it. What, 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 you know, wasn't like that, but it's just funny to me because I said, you kick me in my shins if I don't do it. He said, okay. <laughs> he's so precious to me. So, okay, so, 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 he said that to me. Now, mind you, Said, I gave him a covenant. I said, I want to do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and I know I got a problem with my communication. I'm gonna do this, 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 this. If I don't complete it, you can kick me in my shins. 
He's like, okay. <laughs> My shit's about to get kicked. Because that night, <laughs> let's just say I, I defaulted. So I was angry. He came in a text where I defaulted. And he said, Jamie. And, <laughs> uh, and one thing that got me, I was like, okay, okay, you yell at me, okay, but you did it in front of everybody. That I cried. You know, I was like, but he did it in front of the person I was talking to and I was mad at them. Like he did it in front of them. No, this whole texting was, I was yelling at them the evil that they did. They did something bad, but the, the, the evil that they did, I was yelling at them in front of two pastors. They could see, now y'all see what's really going on. And mm, 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 mm. he came and I was like, Jamie. <laughs> in that case, that's kind of what we have going on here. That's the again, right? To, and here's the thing. It's not that, it's not that, um... I defaulted exactly against what I said word for word. I didn't mess up as far as like, okay, I, I said I was going to eat the pie and I just did not eat the pie. It wasn't a that word for word type thing. But what it was of a, a understanding, right? But what it is, uh, we have the Holy Spirit. I mean, if the Holy Spirit can pick you up and carry you into a situation, carry you into it, uh, right? Like Shadrach, Misha, uh, and Abednego, when you realize that they were carried into the fire. Why? Because you got to you got to get into the fire before you meet Jesus. Some things you don't get from God until you get in the fire, right? And, that, and here's the thing, they were put in the midst of the fire. And if God did not do it, if God did not, see, I told him, I said, God is allowing this. Because if God did not allow it, if God did not do it, right, I would be dead.